This is a place for scholarly pursuits. You do not look the scholarly sort. You carry enough weapons and sundries to burden an over-muscled ox. And like most armored humans in arcs, your pursuits are not likely intellectual. Hardly. I cry for peace. They yearn for war. They stray from civilized thought, ignore the lessons and memories of the fallen. Strife does not unite us. It scatters us. I tell them, yet they do not hear. She nods silently. Oh, Lucian, help us! The elf raises her head and... Memories and scholarship. Heady pursuits that elevate our kind above others. The humans and lizards lunge at each other's kneecaps. We follow the high road, and are the better for it. None is my concern. Humans hang their own and set their scaled counterparts ablaze, yet wrinkle their noses at any elf feasting on the past. The limbs they tear from each other are new volumes in the endless history we record. I say leave them to their brutal squabbles. We are done here. Academics and intellectuals only. Welcome to Ark, stranger. Care to see a trick? The merchant snaps his fingers and a small flame emerges from his forefinger. He blows it out as he would a candle and smoke wafts forth. Well, it's not a very dramatic stunt, but kids like it and doesn't freak out their parents. But I presume you're after something a little more sensational, no? Unhappy? Yes. They've been scattered by fog and wind to every corner of the world. And like most elves, these ones wait for something, someone. I suspect they pray for a salvation that may or may not arrive. As for me... He waves his palm through the air. A trail of multicolored smoke trails behind it to form a hazy rainbow. He then blows into the rainbow and it dissipates into a dozen formless wisps. I create my own happiness. Dunch. My stuff will get you started at least. Merchant Ros and his pals, their stock's exceptional. You might want to check his place out once that wedding's over and done. Most marvelous magic right at your fingertips. Pieces of our collective soul, yours to buy. I've little for sale beyond the very history of the elven people. I sell not just goods, but memories. Wisely chosen. There you are. A 
been looking for Lothar. I suppose she can sense how close she is to him. Luckily for all of us, I've been busy. I know exactly what we need to do to get him out of Losa's head and into the palm of her hand. Shall I continue? Well, the prognosis is very good. I know of a way we can find your demon's home plane, the place he stores the souls he steals. If we can find it, we can destroy it. Losa inhales sharply. I'll read that as excitement, gratitude, battle lust. It's just, this is it. This is everything I've wanted. Finally, a chance to, to have a chance. That's the idea, at least. But we need to move quickly. The faster we can get in and out of there, the less chance there will be that a drama leak realizes we're there. So, are you ready? Yes. Yes, definitely. I think. So, team, ready to roll? Malady takes Losa's hands and closes her eyes. Stay near me, all of you. We don't want to get lost where we are going. You are suddenly heavy on your feet. The air here feels weighted with import and dread. All light within you feels suddenly dimmer. Here we are. Tread carefully, Losa. This place... it isn't safe. Losa looks at you nervously and smiles. I'm glad you're here. So, where should we start? That depends on what we find. We need to weaken your demon by freeing the souls he's trapped here. Exactly how he's storing them, and what that will mean for us, will be a surprise for both of us. The powerful ones do. Nothing they enjoy more than a private playground where no prying eyes can interfere with their... fun. And before you ask, no, I don't have one. Even I have a modicum of decency. Deep, deep down. I believe so. But we won't let that happen. You can say that again. You can, but that would close the portal for good. It isn't nothing for me to bring us here. It takes a great sacrifice. Don't waste it. Not now. I need to... No wax pools at the candle's wick, though it grows brighter as you inspect it. A feeling comes over you. There's a soul within this flame, within the black wax that fuels it. Do you feel it, Losa? There's a soul within this candle. So, this is how your demon operates. He collects them here and feeds from them at his leisure. I feel it. It's the spirit of a woman. Prudence. The innkeeper in Driftwood. She made a deal with him 
with a drama leak, and now she'll be trapped here forever. If the demon is feeding from her, we need to snuff the candle out. This is how we'll weaken him. Snuff her out? But that's like, like killing her. If I do that, I'm no better than Adramalik. Oh, please. He destroys people for the love of it. If we must do this, it's to save the thousands he'd feed on in future. That isn't true. I don't care about them. I mean, I do. But the only person I really care about is me. She hesitates for a moment, then turns away from you. She reaches out and pinches the wick, snuffing out the fire. There. It's done. Let's... let's keep moving. Good idea. There'll be more where this came from. Not now. I need to focus on Losa. The candles glow with the light of the spirits housed by each. They reach toward Losa, eager to be heard. You know what you must do, Losa. There is no other way. Two people. Two souls. Two souls just like me. You're right. I owe them that. I owe them at least that. She holds her hand to the flame and seems to go into a trance. Two souls. So different. Two souls bound together by the demon. One. A humble man. A father. The other. A, a killer. The first, he understands. He wants me to destroy Adramalik. He's willing to, to be destroyed himself. The second is full of anger, of fury. He doesn't want to be sent into the darkness. I have no choice. If I want to survive him, I... I have to be... like him. I have to do this, it's the only way. Losa reaches out and twists the candle's wicks. They smoke and die. You're getting the hang of this. Very good. Not done yet, Losa.
wasn't expecting this. The candles twinkle in the distance, each a life, each a soul. All these people, all these people, all these precious people. She stands silent, stock still. Melody suddenly grabs Losa's arm. She speaks through gritted teeth. We must stop him. This cannot continue. We can't let it. We need to free them, snuff them out. If a drama leak can't draw on their power, we'll be able to face him and finish him. I... I... But they're all like me. Every last one of them. How can I... How can I... I know it isn't easy, but we need to end them. Yes, they will vanish. They won't go onto the hall. They'll simply cease to be. But if we don't do this, there will be no stopping a drama leak. The sea of candles will grow larger. He won't stop. There is no slaying the demon while this place remains. We need to act. I know this isn't easy, but I'll help. Just say the word and I'll summon a flood large enough to end this, all of this, once and for all. Losa looks out over the sea of candles for a long while, saying nothing. It's so quiet here. I don't feel him at all. Here we are, before the evidence of all his disgusting deeds, and my mind is clearer than it's been in a long time. It's funny, isn't it? How some pain is so big it just burns you clean from the inside out. It's almost like I could just step off the edge of this ledge and float away. There's nothing to me anymore. Nothing at all. The light from the candles dances in her dark eyes as she looks at you. Do I? She takes your hand and looks out over the sea of souls once more. She leans against you, letting you support the smallest bit of her weight. Sometimes I think my fate was written from the beginning. I was never going to manage it. When someone that powerful wants something from you, they just take it. That's what they do. Only an idiot pretends they won't. She stiffens and stands upright, running her fingers through her hair. She smiles. Smirks, really. I guess that makes me an idiot. Malady, let's do it. With pleasure. Ah, perfect. There, it's done. should do it we need we need to leave quickly she pants and wipes her mouth blood smears across her sleeve Losa is still and quiet 
her eyes flashing grey, then black, then draining back to normal. A drama leak. He must be furious. We need to get out of here. Now. Hurry. We have it, Losa. Do you feel it? How weak he's become. It's amazing. My heart feels I can almost start hoping I stand a fighting chance. You still need to face him. You still need to best him. But you can do it, especially with allies like this at your side. Of that, I have no doubt. None. I... I need to rest. You can do this. You are ready. You can finish this, now and forever. I couldn't have done any of it without you, Mals. Losa wraps Malady in a huge hug. Malady grimaces and pats her back stiffly. Having extinguished the flames in the demon's home plane and killed innocents in the process, Losa looks to her party, eyebrows raised. I had no choice. If I had left those souls alive, I, I stand no chance of defeating a drama leak. This is the only way forward. Many souls are lost, but many more will be saved thanks to you. There was no question about it. You had to weaken that vile demon. Well done. That was... that was amazing. He's scared. I feel it. Oh my gods, I feel it! This is it! She suddenly stops short and stares at you, hard. She leaps into your arms and plants a huge, wet kiss on your mouth. You and me, we can do anything! Let's get him, Chief. The door does not open, but it feels alive. It feels like it's examining you, or at least one of you. The door is examining Losa. The door does not open.
This grave is unmarked. I've spotted something. Here lies some anonymous soul. 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 Here lies some anonymous. I've spotted something. This grave is unmarked. This grave is here lies some anonymous soul. Here lies some anonymous soul. Stuck fast. It won't work. It's fixed to the platform. On the wire. This grave is unmarked. The door does not open. A creeping sensation comes over you, as if the door were examining you. No, sir. The doctor will see you now. The nurse stares openly at you. His eyes are a pitiless black, like a hungry shark. You... you are known. You are on the doctor's books. He awaits you. Go to him. The nurse hisses at you while you remain in earshot. Your flesh has such perfume. I am drunk on you. Losa, the doctor will see you now.
The nurse throws you a sultry look, offset by a smear of blood around her mouth. Something shifts beneath her robes, the outline of a diminutive third arm. A mewling cry can be heard from her abdomen. She places a hand over it and winks. Food, baby. Be on your way, my lovely. You struggle in vain against the restraints binding you to the table. The gag muffles your screams as the scalpel is lowered to your flesh.
The nurse spots you, then abruptly averts his gaze with a scowl. Don't tempt me. The doctor will be displeased if I have my fun without asking. Go! The nurse slinks right up to you and inhales deeply, then exhales with a sigh. <sighs> you smell unclean. Would you like to be clean? She flicks her long, black tongue over cracked lips while staring unblinkingly. Her eyes reflect no light. They only consume. The nurse rubs his hands together in glee at the sight of you. His palms are slick with some oily substance. Do you faint at the sight of blood? He leans in and whispers, his voice hoarse with a desperate longing. Would you like to? person in the entire world. How are you, Nosa, dear? It's odd seeing you here among my things, my practice. Usually it's me who visits you. He stumbles and coughs, then regains his composure. His eyes narrow malevolently. I understand you've been very very, very busy. Losa shoots you a knowing glance and smirks. I have to say, a drama leak, you don't look too good. He winces and recoils, then quickly regains his composure. Come, Losa. After all we've been through, you must know better than to test me like this. Maybe once, before I cut you off from your precious candles. Did it hurt when I snuffed them out? Did you feel the loss of each one as their power fell away from you? How does it feel, Adramalik, to be as small and powerless as you make the rest of us feel? Shut up! Shut up! Such disrespect. I'd be a bit friendlier if I were you. But then again, I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? I'm still going to destroy you. Stay away from me. Stay where you are. You should have stayed away from me. Losa puts a hand to her weapon. She glows with cold fire. Her radiance fills the room. She looks to you. Ready, Chief? I have given you everything. The powers of the gods. Freedom from their relentless demands. Everything I had, I laid at your feet. 
And you react to me with this... this anger, this hatred. It defies logic. It defies explanation. There's nothing left I can do for you, Losa. Nothing but feel sorry for you. And that I certainly do. But make no mistake, this changes nothing. You are mine. Mine and mine alone. I don't need your consent. I only need your soul. I'm so very disappointed in you, Losa. Look what you've made me do. Bad, bad girl, Losa. I shall have to teach you a lesson.
woman you now know better than almost anyone is staring intently before you. Fingers curled rigidly at her sides. Grayish black veins run from her eyes down her cheeks, then suddenly clear. She blinks. Her bright blue eyes, bluer than you've ever seen them, shine with life. Hey. Hey. It's over. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. She goes silent, listening. You know, I think maybe I was wrong before, that I could just, just get rid of him. I can still hear something deep down, like an echo, really, an echo of a whisper. And if I choose to listen, She pauses, one ear cocked, and frowns. It gets louder. And if I choose not to listen... She cocks her head the other way, brow furrowed, then breaks into a huge smile. I can't really hear it at all. I guess that's a new kind of freedom. Maybe not the freedom to be alone, but the freedom to choose which company to keep. She smiles and steps forward, her heat like a warm breeze, her smell like earth and leaves, and leans in to whisper in your ear. Me. And I choose you. I choose us. She leans back, her face shining, eyes dancing, radiating freedom, love, joy itself. So, now that my voice is mine again, want to hear a song? <laughs>
I love that song, you know. But I'm not even sure who wrote it. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was one of the voices. Maybe a bit of both. She smiles slyly, hums a little melody. Nothing you've heard before. <sighs> I guess it's time to start on some new material. Now, onward. She stops short, mid-stride. Her eyes go wide. It's... it's not... I see them all. Thousands of them. Thousands of planes. Thousands of demons. Millions of souls. Lost souls. So many trapped. So many doomed. Like I was. Like I was. She shakes her head, eyes squeezed shut. Someone needs to help them. Someone like us. Someone like me. Don't worry, Chief. I'm on high alert. Hey, everything okay? She flings her hands into the air, closes her eyes and laughs. I feel... real. She twirls in place, then stands straight, arms at her sides, still smiling. I feel like I can take on the world. As for Dallas, bring it on. Don't worry, Chief. I'm on high alert. <laughs> Which part? All those people we snuffed out. They're gone now. But there won't be more ever again. Not there, at least. As for the rest of the realm's demons... Well, what is it they say? The first cut slice is the deepest. Once this one scabs over, I'll be ready to hunt out the rest of them, wherever they're hiding. We make a good team, don't we, Chief? A really good team. May as well get to it, then. Hey, everything okay? Last I heard, Dallas has something that belongs to us. Let's get her. The box hops and dances, as if an energetic toad lives within it. A large key protrudes from the side. <laughs> Die, Isbeal! The swaying toy sports a grin so evil. It might have spawned from the void itself. But it's not the smile that disturbs you most. It's the ominous ticking of the mechanism beneath. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the doctor's plan! Hide in wedding cake. When dessert time came, go boom! Goodbye, Isbeal! <laughs> oh? <laughs> 